We've got a cell potential and free energy question here um, dealing with my uh, equation that you see. So we can take a look at our analysis. Now, when we're looking at our redox, um, of course, um, in solution, uh, you can see that the sodium stays bonded on both sides. Therefore, it's retaining its charge, so it's not undergoing any part of redox. All right, it'll have a plus one charge on both sides. But the other guys won't. So um, he'll be in the solution, and so we can figure out how these um, two reactants are going to change. All right, so I've got the Cl2, and then in solution we have the ClO2 minus. And if I go to my reduction potential chart and start to investigate what these guys want to do, you'll find that chlorine with the higher number of 1.36 absolutely wants to be reduced, all right? Um, so it ends up once balanced looking like this, right? Because on the other side, it would be Cl minus and then we'd have to make our uh, everything balance out, all right? Which means my friend over here is gonna want to be reduced so we're going to, um, I'm sorry, let's <laughs> reduce. He wants it to be oxidized, 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 um, which means electrons must be a product. All right. Um, so we're actually fine there. Now, the problem is for the two reactions. Um, now, to, to find E, we could actually leave them unbalanced because as you multiply reactions, it doesn't change the E value. It's not like Hess's law where you have to multiply um, delta H. Here, the, uh, these values um, that you find on your reduction chart, even if I multiply that bottom reaction by two, because remember we need the same number of electrons in each um, reaction, these numbers will stay the same. Um, because it's like putting the twice as many batteries and uh, or having twice as much people to do twice as much work, it all ends up being the uh, the same total. So um, I did flip this sign because of course this was oxidation. Uh, so when I do that and I find the sum here, we're going to end up with that value, which is one of my answers, right? Because this is E. All right. But then in order to find delta G, that's where I will need a balancing act to take place here. Um, because remember, the number of electrons must be the same. So I'm going to multiply by two all of these guys here. And when I do that, we'll get a different overall reaction that is actually not required in this problem. But I can use my free energy equation to find delta G. All right, and if you remember, it, it looks like this, right? This is what we're we're filling in. So let's do that. Delta G is going to equal negative. How many electrons do the half reactions have in common? Two. What's Faraday's constant? This big value. What's our voltage? 0.41. All right. And then that will get you a final delta G of negative 79 kilojoules.